Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies. Today is April 29th, 2019, and we are recording episode 30, where we are still on Roshar in part three of our discussion of book two of the Stormlight Archive, Words of Radiance. I'm Bill, and I am joined, as always, by my honor-bound co-hosts, Amy and Jordan. Welcome, guys. Hello. Man, you're going for it. Like, I'm just impressed that you can keep coming up with them for Roshar. <laughs> it's the English There measure. are so many of these. This is number seven that we've done for Roshar. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But f- fortunately, there's so many characters that you, you can, can play do something. with. You can do something. Yeah. Yep. Now, for those of our listeners who listen to the podcast recordings or watch the videos on YouTube after we've posted them, we do want to remind you that it's possible for our listeners to interact with us live via chat as we record each episode at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. We record our episodes every other Monday night starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Please join us. Take an active part. Just add to the discussion. Make us laugh. Try and throw us off balance. I mean, it's not like we don't get off balance on our own anyway, but still, you could be part of that. (laughs) Uh, Now, like we have done for, like we did for The Way of Kings and we've been doing for the past few weeks, we are in the middle of a multi-episode discussion of Words of Radiance and we're splitting it up this time based on the three major plot points. We've already done, uh, in the first week we looked at Shallan's story. Uh, her interactions with Pattern, her flashbacks, her journey to the Shattered Plains, etc. Uh, last time, we looked at Kaladin and Syl and everyone basically surrounding them. And mm-hmm. this week, we are going to be looking at the royal family themselves, the Kolins. Dalinar, Adolin, Navani, Elokar, and Renarin. We're also checking out the conflict with Sadius and the war against the Parshendi. So... You guys did a good job wearing the wearing blue for Colin. I I failed today. I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> and my headphones are always blue, so. Yeah. Um so yeah. so we are looking at like I I listed off five people. Of course, Yasna is the sixth member of the Colin family, but we kind of covered most of her stuff in uh, the Shallan episode. Mm-hmm. As always, there are going to be spoilers for Words of Radiance and for the way of kings and we may delve into even a few outside of that but just heads up there's we're talking about stuff so can can i start us off with something that's completely not on the notes and just occurred to me Mm -hmm. okay so we you brought up yesna i forgot to mention did either of you read the deleted scene that brandon put that he considers canon from yesna's point of view for this book <gasps> no. Back when I, I first read Words it. of Radiance. So for those who or don't not know, when I first read, but you when can it find it released. somewhere on the internet. That's definitive, I hope. And it's basically, it's the attack scene. It's very short from Yasna's, uh, her, her perspective. And so it's her going into Shadesmar. And it just changes things just slightly. Because I know a lot of people have asked. It's like, well, she kind of just abandoned everyone. And it's mm-hmm. like, well, she was stabbed literally through the heart, but she instinctively went into Shadesmar to to escape it. Mm-hmm. And while there, she has a conversation with her spren, Ivory, and she uses the last of her stormlight. She turns the bonds of the of the sailors into smoke to give them a chance. Mm. Oh, and that's the last which is, of which, the scene. Which is, of course, remember Shallan had her. She did the drawing oh, and, yeah. and basically she saw them climbing out of the water. So, so you're saying there's a chance. There's, there's a, a chance. little, uh, which means Yalb might still be alive. Yay. I know. I, yeah. I liked Yalb. He was fun. Also, his name is Yalb and that's just fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so. true. That's scientific. 
All right, so where we left off with the Colin family last time, Dalinar is not in a happy place. <laughs> oh, no. I don't Adolin. understand why. It's not like he just, his god died or anything. Adolin is wearing his angry eyes because, you know, what's what with the whole being stabbed in the back, almost literally by Sadius. Yeah. And just so, you know, there, things in the war camps are a little bit tense, angry. shall we say? Yeah. yeah, just a little bit. Um, And then, of course, with Dalinar, you know, he, he left off by having that hardcore scene where at the end of the the first book he goes in basically grabs the king by the throat pins him to the wall and is like okay this is the way things are gonna go (laughs) my favorite thing with that is Mm -hmm. to to put the nail in the coffin on that originally he puts his hand on his bare chest just to show Uh him oh yeah i can kill you and i love it every time we see it from kaladin's perspective where like dalinar reminds elikar of that moment like elikar like puts his hand to his chest a little bit and, and I, every time I see it, Khaled is just sort of like what the crap is that? Yeah. It's like, so, there's something going on there but uh, oh, yeah. man. well and, and then of course at the very end he's like he caps it off by saying oh and by the way I'm dating your mom and, <laughs> so. get over it, it's happening there's no time to get off this train, there's no breaks <laughs> but uh but, the, you know, it, and it's interesting because, you know, Dalinar kind of looks back on that and he's just like, ah, was I a bully? I was just a bully there. Well, shoot. <laughs> I seem to have been literally heavy handed with this. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, Short but you play. can't really blame him. Yeah. But Dalinar Cause... also, of course, now has given up both his shard plate and his shard blade. Shard plate to his son. Uh, to, to, he gives his to shard Renarin. plate to Renarin. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, he used the shard blade to buy all the bridgemen, who mm-hmm. he now trusts more than a lot of other people because, well, they've got good reason to be trusted. He just <laughs> bought their freedom, and mm-hmm. and they have no reason to trust and or like Sadius. So, yep, they may have a small axe to grind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One could say they have a chip on their shoulder, a chip the size of a bridge. <laughs> uh, okay, mm-hmm. now I. I it's. I, I'm going to fully admit, I'm getting stuff mixed up now from both because I'm in the middle of Oathbringer right now again, and I'm getting stuff from Words of Radiance mixed up with stuff from uh, from Oathbringer. I'm and I'm trying to remember now. Was Navani had she already discovered the Don Chant in the first book? She was working on it. Okay, she was, so she, she was working on it. I think, but she had recognized it. Yeah, first. and they were okay. they were in the were in the midst of of deciphering it. Yeah, because okay. she had only gotten like the last few uh, mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. his visions, and now yeah. he's starting the cycle over again. She's now getting mm-hmm. the full so she's picture. Getting, yeah, she's right. getting all the. the I just couldn't remember if she picked it up at the end of that book or the beginning of this one. So <clears throat> it was the previous one. Okay. So. Um. So anyway, uh, Dalinar has made a proclamation because he's now the High Prince of War. Um, he because that was one of the things that he told Elakar was going to happen, mm-hmm. and he's kind of ticked off a few of the high princes because he's essentially said every gem heart that's brought back is the property of the of the king, mm-hmm. and then he divvies them up as necessary. You know, basically trying to take out the the game aspect, the, the, the greed aspect of of, of it, yeah. the the. Chasm, the plat, platform runs? Oh, goodness. Plateau Ca- runs. Pla- plateau plateau runs. runs. That's the one. Yeah, because they have the problem of when they first went out there, it was for revenge. Mm-hmm. But they get out there and suddenly they discover this amazing resource. This is and very so, profitable. Yeah. Well, and mm-hmm. just the profit motive quickly overtakes any sort of, you know, noble acts of vengeance or whatever that they were going for because, you know, that's a lot mm-hmm. of money. Right. And you can only go and just kill people because you're angry for so long before you get over Well, I mean, because it, it's not mm-hmm. just like, you know, like we watch <clears throat> movies and revenge is an amazing motivator for an individual character. Mm-hmm. But at a certain point, it's like, yeah, Elikar wants revenge. That was his father. And mm-hmm. Daladar wants revenge. That was his brother. 
But for everyone mm-hmm. else, it's like uh, Sadius won. Sadius yeah. kind of wants revenge, but Sadius is also Sadius. So yeah, yeah. Sa- Sadius wanted wants revenge for someone he views as uh, his brother as well. But mm-hmm. it's just at a certain point he sees they're like, oh, they're going to tear down literally everything Galvalar worked for. So now we're playing games. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it leads to one of my favorite moments in when they when Shalon comes up with the whole plan to to for Adolin to do the the duel, you know, with disadvantage and get the mm-hmm. the boon from Elicar. Mm-hmm. And in Cal I think we actually get it from Kaladin's perspective where he's like Yeah, but this is all just a game. Like this doesn't matter. It's just a game. And it's actually Adolin in one of his moments where Adolin is showing that he's warming up to Kaladin. Mm-hmm. Where he's just like, Yes, you're right. It is a game but it's a game that Sadius has agreed to play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he can't back out of it. Like, yeah. And and Cal is just like, huh? Okay. Then (laughs) cause he hasn't been looking at it from the, the Royal or more high prints view that they're all looking at it. Well, yeah. He's he's a a dark guys. It's not, it's never Mm -hmm. a game for them. They're the pawns. It's never a game to a pawn. Mm -hmm. A pawn isn't playing chess. The pawn is in, is on the battlefield. Yeah. They're, they're, the pieces that are sacrificed so mm-hmm. so let's talk about adolin's uh dual cycle because <laughs> my gosh this is one of my favorite parts of the whole book mm-hmm. well i love it because it starts off with dalinar actually really being creative and starting to come up with political plans and he's just like yeah. adolin you know what was it? something like i'm taking you off your leash or something like or something that. like that yeah yeah and, and adolin sort of gives him his confused look for a second then he's just, then all of a sudden his eyes light up he's like really really <laughs> I can, I, I can do I can it. Do it again. <laughs> and I love it because we see Adolin's perspective as a as an actual duelist. Well, okay, first mm-hmm. let, let's go let's lead into this still cuz cuz basically what leads into it is um Kaladin is talking to them saying, "Okay, here's what I would do if I had unruly soldiers underneath me. First mm-hmm. off, you separate them from each other. Well, I can't really do that here. Second off, you um, punish like, and then the final thing he said was, "You disarm them." He's like, "Well, I can't disarm. Yeah. We're, we're at war." He's like, "Don't disarm. You know, so, so take their their big weapons. To, you know, take the shards." Mm-hmm. He's like, "How can I do that?" And that's when Dallin, I was just like, oh. "Adolin, <laughs> <laughs> you're you going go. to take their toys away." <laughs> well, and it's mm-hmm. it's really cool because it. There's a lot of posturing just to even get the duels mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. Sadius is also manipulating things from behind the scenes because Sadius sees what they're trying to do. Oh, S- Sadius is, in most cases, Sadius is very, very sa- savvy. And then in a couple of cases, he's wrong genre savvy. Yeah, he, he doesn't fully understand what they're trying to do. Like he, mm-hmm. he gets most of it, but not other little chunks. Right. Well, he has the hardest time reading Dalinar because Dalinar is a hundred percent sincere, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Sadius knows that, but he also doesn't understand it. So it's hard to fully read that that motive. But the other thing that's interesting about it is just the fact that this book is where we see what a good pairing Sadius and in ELA are. As a couple, oh, because mm. e- ELA is a great spy master and she's mm-hmm. behind the scenes and he's really good at understanding sort of the big picture of where mm-hmm. things fit together. She's very detail oriented, though. Right. And so she has a hard time seeing the forest through the trees. And so they make for this great pair. And we do sort of see how she's not as capable as he is when, when we get to Oathbringer and stuff. And it's mm-hmm. it's not because she's dumb or anything like that. It's just that. She's lost the other half of yeah, they, the they well-oiled were, they machine. They complement each other very, very well in mm-hmm. such a delightfully evil way. I yep. didn't realize I liked delightfully evil couple, but uh, it's a trope I've decided I enjoy. <laughs> oh man, there was uh, something I was gonna say, and you you were talking, and I forgot it. Oh, well. It's derailed. Um, yep, yep, yep. Were we gonna talk about the rituals with the dueling? Well, it, I was—it was still on the whole Sadius. Oh, aspect Sadius of and it. Elila. I don't. Oh well. I'll, you're, I'll think, you're, I'll think it it should probably be part. pronounced uh, Elai, right? Because her name probably, is perfectly yes. symmetrical. Yes, yes Elai. It is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, so 
uh, but yeah, Adolin <laughs> can't get anybody to agree to a to a match with him because Sadius is playing, you know, plucking strings behind the scenes and and there's also the whole hierarchy thing so where some of the greasy and smarmy about it yeah and it, it well, seems like some of the duelists at least i don't know if it's fully what they mean or just they use the excuse but they say it's, well you haven't been dueling you got to start at the bottom it's the excuse it's absolutely yeah. the excuse I, so i i will say in somewhat in their defense it's clear brandon has based and this is where sports jordan comes out he's based how the dueling works on things like boxing and mma um, mm-hmm. you can't just put up the title belt for, uh, for, for defense, like just against any random challenger. Mm-hmm. Like you, there's an understanding of you do have to do your, make your dues you, because if you, you don't you have do to that, earn, you have to earn the right to challenge. Yeah. Cause them. if you don't do that, then they do have, like, it's just, it's, it, it makes it untenable. And so mm-hmm. at least from, uh, it's at least a defensible position for at least the top guy to be like, I'm not going to let you challenge me like that. I would just have everyone challenging me mm-hmm. then and be like, well, you let Adolin fight for it. And so he's at least defensible, but I love how Adolin, but cause yeah, they're all getting plucked by Sadius' strings and you know, like any dog on a, you know, a leash, the only way to get it off the leash is to give it something so tempting that mm-hmm. it'll ignore the leash and finally rip free of its master's reins. And so he's like, so I'll put up uh, both my shard and my plate against yours. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and they don't think he's the, you know, he finally finds someone who doesn't think he's good enough to do it. Well, and that's the thing is the first thing he does, like he just turns it into an absolute brutal beat down. Stone yeah. stance. But, but it's, it's not just stone stance. It's just very, very unrefined. Mm-hmm. You know, he very walks in a lethe. To the point where somebody who's very skilled sees that and says, okay, that was a gimmick. You know, that's Mm -hmm. the kind of trick that'll only work once. And in all honesty, it is the kind of trick that'll only work once. And that's why the second... It's not a trick. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that they don't quite understand. (laughs) Well, except except that it kind of... Well, yeah. But the thing is, so for the second match, though, what does he do? He pretends to barely win. Yeah. Which, honestly... To do that, you have to be a master. Mm-hmm. Well, because, and we get we from all people we get that perspective from Sadius. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It reminds me of uh, in at the, at the end of The Incredibles, where he's like, you know, beat him, but you know, it's like it's like do well, but not too well. <laughs> Go for a good oh, second. Oh, for, for poor Dash, for, <laughs> who's who's in the race, and he's like not even having to try. And so he aims for spe- a specific point mm-hmm. rather than it's like. I can win every time. It's not fun anymore. I, you know, I'm going to do a left-handed type thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so he makes it look like he just barely won. And to do that convincingly, you have to be incredibly skilled. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like you said, Sadius actually sees that and just like, oh. Because the thing we do, is good. We, do, we do sometimes forget is Sadius was a good good duelist back in and the he's, day. And he's yes. still good with a sword. He's just not doing it as often. Well, well to the, And he's fat. Yeah, that doesn't help he's, either. He's, he's gotten old and become, fat and lazy. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, and then, he's of course. He's become the evil version of Breeze. I like the way that he gets the third <laughs> fight. Where because he he wants to fight Relis because Relis is the champion and Relis mm-hmm. is the one and uh, and Relis is the way that he would be able to get the boon. Yeah. Um, although I don't think he has that idea until later. But anyway, so he challenges Relis's cousin, mm. Elit, because yeah. his cousin isn't quite as smart. Is it, yeah, okay? He's not did, quite as savvy. Did it occur to anyone else that Elit sounds a lot like idiot? No. Nope. <laughs> Not at all. I just saw how it was spelled because it's spelled I L I T, right? It's E L E L. Okay, I thought yeah. it was I just listening no. to it. And so no, Elit. But Dang. um, but then what he does? He doesn't just beat him; he destroys him Ooh. because yeah. he just is so precise. And it, it's just like each each fight is a completely different strategy. Technique, yeah. But each one, it's not just an in duel strategy. It's a it's a way to manipulate people outside of the duels. He's playing a deep meta game. 
Is this the one where he he lets each piece get drained and then falls on him? Or is yeah. that the other one? Well, no, that's the third one where he's yes. slowly but surely okay. breaking everything till he can't move and You're... then just walks over and tink, boop. Yeah, so you, I think you're I'm thinking, thinking of the fourth, of a fourth one, actually. I'm yeah. thinking of part of the fourth. No, the third one right. is the one where he drains the other guy right. to the point where there is nothing left in his thing and he just shoves him over. Mm-hmm. And, essentially and it's so just, heavy you can't move. And he essentially just humiliates him in front of everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, takes everything he's got and <laughs> yep um, just sitting here it's like oh man look at this plethora of shards i have everyone <laughs> i got all the shiny things wouldn't it be cool if you dueled me for it <laughs> well and the then, other thing is remember the very first one that he wins he he get it he wins a sword a shard blade and he gives that to renarin, renarin. Mm-hmm. which we find out later doesn't quite work yeah <laughs> oh i'm sure it's okay for your sanity to hear someone constantly mm. screaming in your head mm-hmm. yeah it's not problematic at all no nah, it's great renard was doing fine before anyway right <laughs> <laughs> um so that reminds me of if you if we mind if we sidetrack for a second of of the scenes with renard and doing his training in his yes. shard plate Yes. Because most of those scenes are from, I think they're all from Kaladin's point of view. Yes. But it's really interesting to see Renarin be so pliable and how it's, is it Zaheer? Mm-hmm. Yes. How, like, when Zaheer's talking to Kaladin, he's sitting here going, oh, well, oh, no. or, or Z- Kaladin's Zyle. listening. Zyl. Or Zyl. Zyl. Or Z- anyway, the sword master guy whose name I'm going to mess up right now. Um, anyway, but he. His name is Vasher. I know, but it's too many names. Too many names. Um, so many names. I'm trying to make a point. So, um, Vasher, whatever his name is, is talking to Renarin, and he, he, Kaladin is listening and expects Vasher to be disappointed when Renarin says, no, I, I don't have any training in it. But Vasher's like, no, that's good that I don't have to wipe out any bad habits. And mm-hmm. he makes him jump off the building and then eat with tiny utensils so he can learn to be precise and know mm-hmm. what damage he can take and trust his shard plate and all those other things. And it's it's just kind of interesting to see how they train for that and how Renarin is so willing to just do it. When, when, also... Ren- when Renarin has to do the eating with tiny utensils, <laughs> all I could think of was Beauty and the Beast with the Beast sitting there with the, the little spoon. <laughs> just, I don't know, just like just... a little tiny pinch. Let, let's stay with Renarin for a little bit, actually, because one of the other things that's cool about this is when Renarin joins Bridge 4. Yes. Because it first off, it just shows, one, how different he is from Adolin. But from two, any the, light eye. Right. But yeah, the yeah. humility that Renarin has. Renarin is a very, very special individual. Like, I love him. I think he's mm-hmm. just a great character. I, I can't wait to see what more we get from him. Oh, oh there's going to be so much stuff from him. <clears throat> Book but five uh, is going to be interesting book, now well, that I mean, things have book, come out. Well, and uh, book six is Renarin's, persp- is, or is Renarin's flashbacks. Oh, that's going to be so, I mean, that's going to be a long time before we get that, because after five, he's taking a break. But <laughs> but I am looking He's I writing Mistborn so books in between. I'm okay with that break. <laughs> but I love the fact that at first, everybody's just sort of like, why is not just a light eyes, but the cousin of the king and the son of Dalinar Kalin. Mm-hmm. Why is he here? And, and you know, they're, they're uncomfortable and it feels like they've sort of been invaded, but Renarin is so genuine and so humble about it that he actually does start to fit in because yeah. he's just so eager to help and to do what he needs. You know, they, you know, they start kind of trolling him and he just takes it good naturedly. And, you know, you know, it's explained to him that when they tease him, it's sort of a, a sign of acceptance. Yeah, it's it's and, affectionate and weird in, in its own weird way. But well, it's, it's just, just I, that's how they treat everyone else. And so, the for the first time in Renarin's life, he belongs somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and he ne- yeah, he never and really see, has belonged yeah. anywhere. And you do see some scenes from Adolin where he's like, "That is so weird." Like he doesn't mm-hmm. get how Renarin fits in there, but Renarin feels a lot more comfortable there and i think from kaladin's point of view you do see that he sees the progression of renarin getting more accepted mm-hmm. and how his well, and, demeanor kind of changes a little bit well and renarin you can tell he has just such strong anxiety oh um, yeah and and especially built uh which is 
increased by his health issues. Mm-hmm. You know, because he's not physically fit the way that Adolin is. He's yeah, and so he kind of sees himself as an afterthought, especially because growing up, you know, Adolin was their father's son. You know, this is my mm-hmm. boy. This is the you know. Well, and every everyone loves him. Uh huh. Like yeah. he's not just like this picturesque, you know, because like Dalinar, it's like, yeah, he's the Blackthorn, but Dalinar wasn't likable. Dalinar was very <laughs> contemptible and rough around yes. the edges. Whereas mm-hmm. Adolin is friendly. He's the golden boy. Everyone lo- literally the golden boy. He's the blonde <laughs> thorn. And I will make this a thing. But um, the uh, it's just like he's so lovable. And then here comes Renarin, who's awkward, wears glasses, is uh-huh. not a good fighter. In fact, he's, mm-hmm. you know, he's like he's got some sort of condition that causes him to have fits. I mean, that was my... that was kind of a fun scene seeing Kaladin talking to Renar and, and assessing his his epilepsy. I think is what mm-hmm. it is. And he's like, "Oh wait, is it this kind of this kind?" And, and Renar's, Renar's just like, like "What? <laughs> yeah, how do you know, you these know terms? terms? <laughs> I picked up some field medicine on epilepsy." Right. <laughs> <laughs> like here, here's the thing, Renarin. I think one of the reasons I love him so much is he he reminds me of me growing up. Because I was this skinny little awkward kid who, you know, got winded if I if I ran more than a tenth of a mile. You know, it was like you know they said, "Oh, we're going to do the mile run," and I was like, "Yeah, I'm going to do the mile walk." And and you know, I just awkward, glasses, anxious, nerdy as all get out. The you know, studious, mm-hmm. and and it, it's just. So I, 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 and I think that's why a lot of people do love Renarin because he's relatable. He's, he's the one that the awkward people see him and they're just like, oh, I, I, I understand you. I have been you before. Yeah. And everyone's had that phase where they draw stuff on walls too. I mean, granted we did it when we were three and he did it when he was 16, but you know, similar things. Oh dear. Well, we got, we got, we got to discuss him writing on walls. Yes, kind of important. Yeah. He starts down a doom clock that has everyone on edge. And he won't tell anybody about the fact that it's him. Well, and he can't really, can he? No, it's... Yeah. Well, and it true. puts Dalinar in the bad position because he thinks he's doing it. and everyone, He's like, I did it again. And all the guards are like, there's no way. Like, it couldn't be you. Th- yeah. I forget. How does it come out that it was Renarin? Because he starts writing out zeros on the wall when he's with Shallan. In the, that's right. And that's it's just right. like, oh, that's not ominous. Yeah, keep writing zeros everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'd forgotten that. It's, well, especially considering the fact that he's not supposed to be writing. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's male. He's a, he's a man. So yeah. Well, and that's so. the thing is because all the when they're doing the analysis of it, they're like, oh, the person's handwriting is terrible. And well, that sh- and sh- should have been like their clue. It's like, well, it's mm-hmm. got to be a dude then because dudes don't write. Because women, yeah, white guys aren't allowed to write unless they're a, uh, oh. Glyphs. They write Ar- glyphs. Ardent. Ardent, yes. I was yes. like, what's their priests? So Ardents. the other thing is you just, again, you got to feel for Renarin because, you know, this kid, he thinks he's like, he's going crazy. He's already not really accepted by anybody. And then suddenly he has these fits where he writes things on the wall. He's predicting the future, which is absolutely taboo. Oh yeah. And then on top of it, when he gets the thing that everyone else wants, the shard blade, all he hears is screaming. Exactly. All the screaming. Yeah. And he's supposed to hold it for like a week. (laughs) Uh huh. He had to bond it. Yep. And it's, and so you just think, Oh, the poor kid. Yeah. You know, and after that week is over, you know, he's he's just like finally go away. Just don't want to deal with you. Be gone. Or however I get rid of you guys. Yeah. That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah, so you know, he again, he's just uncomfortable and then he has all these secrets. Mhm. Which ironically, you find out what is his uh what what is his order that he we discover at the truth, end? Truth, truth watcher. Truth, a, a truth watcher, and yet he has yeah. all these secrets that he can't tell anyone. There's yeah. always another secret. secret. Oh, and there it is. <laughs> and there's always money in the banana stand. Oh, I get that one. 
I got wow. that reference. Yes. I understood that reference. Anyway. Um, right. So should we go to the well, Let's the go back. Yeah, let's go back duel. and look at the fourth duel, because now we've, we've given some background on Renarin. Mm-hmm. Um, and so first off, Shallan has this plan. Yes. It's basically do yeah. something spectacular to the point where you can ask a boon of, of, of the, the king. king. Uh, or where the king can grant you a boon, because mm-hmm. Elokar's in on this. Yeah. Um, well, because, and that was the plan that they did back in the day. Gavilar did it. And gave Sadius the boon. Sadius, exactly. And oh, Sadius did it. And right. so it's just one of those, Sadius did it. He absolutely cannot dispute that this is a legitimate thing. Mm-hmm. Because he used this hardcore. <laughs> yep. And it's, it just, it goes back to that line. It's a game that he's agreed to play. Mm-hmm. And it's so, and in that Alethi way where you're not allowed, even though they're a warlike race, you're not allowed to directly attack someone. And like that's the whole the whole thing that's keeping the piece mm-hmm. together is the fact that Dalinar is not strong enough to attack Sadius outright mm-hmm. with his forces after the betrayal, and mm-hmm. Sadius knows that if he tries to take advantage of that, the other high Everybody princes else. will rally against him because it's a very mm-hmm. unlethy thing to do because it's all mm-hmm. this cloak and dagger stuff. Yep, it's just so brilliant. It's, it's the most polite war. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then on top of it. Because Sadius likes to do things that are also artful in a way. Because mm-hmm. you got you got you can't just stab them with a the knife. You need to twist it a little bit. He and, likes being the clever one. And I just love like after you know we haven't discussed the fight yet, but after it all sort of goes away, we get the Sadius, uh, you know, viewpoint where he's just like, "Oh my goodness, that almost worked!" And it was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I did not oh, see that, that was, coming. That was so like, oh, that was close. Oh, that was good. Oh, I do well, not want. Well, and that's to the, think that's they the other thing that. is the the other thing is he's like Dalinar. This isn't the way Dalinar works. What the heck mm-hmm. is going on? Well, and yeah. that's the thing that he's underestimating because he keeps thinking of it as Dalinar. Maybe he's the Blackthorn. Yeah, and he also, you know, maybe Navani. Ela probably thinks about Navani as well, mm-hmm. but. He's. They're not thinking of that. It's not just those two. It's now also their sons, and mm-hmm. Kaladin and Shalon. Like they don't mm-hmm. recognize that he has been making. He's been building his his yeah, inner his group, circle, yeah. and he's been building it with people who don't think like himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, so Shalon's plan though is just all that she gives him is do something spectacular, and Adolin just is like, I can find something, <laughs> and so he challenges. Relis to a duel and he says you can bring anyone you want yeah and the doesn't... specific wording well because it's like is but he it doesn't specify only one. one you want or is it anyone you want yeah yep. and... and or who no it was whoever you want i think it is mm-hmm. what it was Might and be, yeah. the other thing is that not only has he ticked off all of these light eyes like the these lords and members of the the high prince's houses he ticked off the head judge because he first because again all of his different tactics they really bent the rules to the point where they screamed and she took offense at this i'd forgotten that she starts she takes it personally well it's because he's done a bunch of things they're not against the the letter of the law what they're against is Sort of the bylaws, the things that yes. everyone has sort of agreed. We don't do it this way. Right. Mm-hmm. But but so what happens is, you know, she takes this personally and he makes the challenge in front of her. And so she, she is the, puts and she is the wit- she is the witness mm-hmm. and she takes it exactly the way she wants to take it. And so he says, I can bring whoever I want, huh? Brings in three other guys, including, yeah, including one of his best Yakimov. friends, supposedly. Yeah. Well, and it's it, it, the, the other mistake because he puts so much up on it. There are full sets of plate and shards for everyone mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who wins this. So it's it's too tempting. Like there's no mm-hmm. it's not like like had he offered up just three, there'd be one guy be like, well, yeah, but what do I get out of this? Yeah. Right. But it's just like, nope, there's going to be plenty to hand out all around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, and it feels it's, it's interesting because. Uh, the, the rules of, of this are very interesting because, you know, they come in and anybody can join the fight so long as he's still a disadvantaged. Yeah. I find that very bizarre. 
it reminds me very much of hockey, actually, and I really wonder if this was the inspiration. Whenever you have a penalty in hockey, it's very bizarre. Instead of, like, you get a free throw in basketball, you get extra yards in football. In mm-hmm. hockey, it's, we're going to put them in a box. Uh, it's a box where you go when you have a penalty. Let's call it the penalty box, and it's literally called that. And just for two minutes, you're playing their five versus your four. And so it's mm-hmm. this frantic pace where you're, you know, at a disadvantage. And so I just feel like that's sort of the inspiration behind it. They have the advantage, so you're allowed to have up to one less than them. Mm. Right. And it's just, it, it's weird, but every, you look at any sport, there's some arcane rule in that sport. You're just like, why? Why is that the rule? And it's just like, because... It's Somebody, the rules that we yeah. somehow codified in 1827, and look, just quit um, questioning it, okay? That's buddy? just the rule. It's yeah. The see, and for, and for me, I was thinking there's no rule that says a golden retriever can't play basketball. No. So you know. <laughs> oh my! Oh my! Children have found all of the spinoff movies, and oh, oh, no. oh it's terrible. <sighs> anyway, well, a good parent just wouldn't let them watch it. Sane parents need time. There, there's no rules. <laughs> There's no rule saying a uh, saying a, a dog can't duel. Well, they basically oh. say that when Kaladin gets down. Oh, there's no rules that says a dark guy can't fight. Yeah. Or that he has to have a sharp blade. Yeah. I did. I did like that the one, um, guy who went against Renarin wasn't trying to really hurt him. Well, yeah, because because they're like we're just, people we're... do like Renarin, mm-hmm. but they just don't get him. Yeah. And so they're, they're, part of it is just like, it feels like if I hurt him, what kind of a person does that make me? Well, yeah, it's also going to think right, I'm a dirtbag. Yeah, right now they have all the political advantage because, mm-hmm. because Dalinar has been playing with so many taboos. And Adolin is, mm-hmm. while not playing with the taboos, Adolin also isn't exactly a traditionalist by any stretch mm-hmm. of the imagination. Yeah. The moment you would like you attack Renar and it's just going to be like that scene in Malcolm the Middle. It's going to be like, dude, you hit a cripple. And then everyone oh. turns on the bully. Episode mm-hmm. one of Malcolm in the Middle. It's hilarious. Hmm. Hmm. Watch it. I recommend these things. Uh, but not the buddy movies. Not, but yeah, no, it's just not interesting those. Cause... <laughs> no. no. <laughs> those things are a crime. I think like two of the oh. producers actually are serving jail time now for producing two through seven. But so so at the beginning of this duel, when Adolin's fighting for shard bears by himself, that's when it sort of hits him how deep he's gotten in. But he because still does they, a really well, good job. He, do, all he does a good considered. job. But then they, they basically overwhelm him and he's on the ground just getting the snot beat out of him. Mm-hmm. And, he's, and he tries to and he tries to yield. But the high judge won't listen. And the, and the high judge basically... It's never made entirely clear, but it's sort of assumed that she pretends not to hear him. And he realizes he's not leave he's not walking out of this arena. Yeah. Like he is going to either be dead or crippled for the rest of his life. Yeah. And that's but the thing is, that's the that's the mistake they make. Had they mm-hmm. just accepted it, they would have gotten all their shards permanently neutered the Kalin family yep. and be done mm-hmm. with them. Mm-hmm. But instead, and, they had to make a spectacle out of it, and then Deus Ex Kaladin walks in. Well, not yet, because first, <laughs> first Renarin came in. Yeah, and you know he came in to protect his brother. You know he tries to defend his brother. This is, I mean, Adolin and Renarin, they have a a, a brotherly bond. Mm-hmm. You know they're 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 close. Um, they're very different from each other, but they're still close. Mm-hmm. And so Renarin runs out trying to do whatever he can to essentially save his brother's life Mm -hmm. and then gets out. And the first thing that happens is he summons a shard blade and he just goes catatonic. And Dalinar just starts panicking because he's like, like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to lose both of my sons right here. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. Well, so he starts asking around. He's saying, will somebody help you know you see how unfair this is you see how ridiculous this is does anybody here have a shred of honor to to, to fix this amaram won't meet his eyes 
Mm-hmm. Well, and on top, it's actually a very deft move by Elicar because Elicar realizes that this is a trap. Mm-hmm. And Elicar's just like, no, I'm not going to let you borrow the king's plate so that you can lose it. Like, this mm-hmm. is a trap. Be paranoid for once, uncle. Right. Yeah. Like, we and have to cut Ka- our losses on this. Mm-hmm. And then Kaladin does the, ah, oh, dad yeah. gum it. <laughs> Like, and he like, says, is, is there anybody out there, you know, who is there has, any honor? Left? Honor. honor is dead, dead but, but I'll see what I can do. I know, I love that line. <laughs> I know we geeked out over this last time, but it's still such a good line. Because Calvin oh. is such a drama queen, and it's so good. Mm-hmm. Well, and to be fair, Syl is an honor spread. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's a little sense. bit of honor out there. Mm-hmm. Just a little bit, but, literally. But just ah, oh, there's just so much good in the fight. We've already talked about it a bit, but yeah. oh, so much good. Oh, but, but we didn't talk about his rituals before, before yes. his duels, because it's I, I just love the the superstition <laughs> behind. And this it. is so tied in with actual athletes. This goes mm-hmm. back to hockey. One of my favorite players, even though I'm not a Avalanche fan, was Patrick Waugh of the Colorado mm-hmm. Avalanche. He was a goalie. And he was so superstitious, you would think he was like a witch from the 1800s. He would talk to the pipes mm-hmm. on, of the goalposts. He would never like touch any line. Like as he skated over it, he would step over the lines, and like he had all these little rituals that he would do. And it was so well known that he was this eccentric kind of person. That like there's actually commercials where like he's by the goalposts and like he says something. He like turns the goalposts. He's like, no, you. No, look, they're filming. You can't say that. This isn't... No, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's awesome. And so I, I I, think this is one of those things that Brandon paid attention to people who play sports. It's like, yes, athletes are incredibly superstitious, as are soldiers. Well, mm-hmm. well and yeah. there's a... Uh, like, there's even an episode of Frasier where one of the players for the Seattle Supersonics... <laughs> That's right. Um, Niles he, <laughs> he, he, he becomes like... he. He talks to Niles because he's sort of in a slump and mm. Niles talks to him as a psychologist, but instead he, the guy just thinks he gets out of the slump because he rubs Niles' head. And it, and he, but it's just the whole concept of the superstition. So Adolin, he has to have chicken, some form of fowl, I guess, before every duel. Mm-hmm. He always carries his mother's necklace. And he talks to his sword before the match. And I think, we're not sure, but I think he takes a bath. But I'm not positive on that one. I think you're right, but I can't remember. Yeah. Anyway, but He has rituals. But yeah. But now, the interesting thing, we, we're not going to go into this because this is an Oathbringer thing. Talking to the sword has um, a bigger impact than you realize you at, think, at this yeah. point. And so it's just sort of like, okay, this is kind of neat. Hmm. Um, because... Part of it is he's superstitious, and part of it is he just... Adel, in, in particular, personifies things. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he... he, he like, like I said, like with talking to the sword, he just... He assigns personalities. And it's almost like a... He sees the sprint of things. Or has just sort of... He, he looks at it a little bit more so that way than other people do. So... I just, it's just, a, you know, so mm-hmm. it's because well, cool. he, it's because he, he, he recognizes, you know, you, it's back to shy and the emperor's soul where mm-hmm. she's talking about how everything has a soul mm-hmm. and he treats his sword as mm-hmm. if it has a soul in the point where he gives it enough deference where he won't name it. Cause mm-hmm. he's like, it's, it clearly had a name before. And I can't it's, guess it. Yeah. I don't want to get it wrong. And then he finds out later on, just, Wow, I was really right on this one. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so do all the dueling aside, let's talk about Aelin courting Shallan. Yes. Because it's so cute. It's, we need to isolate <laughs> that sound. I need that at the end of the episode, please. <laughs> it was like Emperor Palpatine. You were so no, pleased. That, how many how many episodes have we mentioned frickin' Palpatine in? <laughs> Seven. I don't know. I'm guessing. I don't know. Okay. Now I'm bright red. That's cool. <clears throat> no, like it, matches, it matches your hair from last time. <laughs> right. Okay. But just, okay, the whole concept of this matchup, I mean, starting with Yasna, 
<laughs> I think part of it, it started with yesterday just being like, oh, that boy. That boy is absolutely hopeless. Um, here's what we can do. I know. <laughs> I've got a pupil now. We can we can just make that happen. We'll be good. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and so Shalon shows up and Adolin's, you know, talking to people. And then who is that? Yeah, that I like. Mm. <laughs> well, 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 well. I don't even want to know what that was. It's uh, like smooth jazz. No, no, uh-huh. I, I, I got it. But it, I do like that both of them notice each other. Uh-huh. It is a nice little thing. Well, it's because they both have that hair that stands out completely from the mm-hmm. the crop of the Alethi. Yeah, I think it's I think it's, it's like, an Oathbringer that they mention it that like Adolin's hair is always a sign of like of his upbringing and when he's doing his very mother. yeah when he's doing very Alethi things they're like ah oh, you know how good of the because it shows that we're conquering because we're bringing other bloodlines in because their hair breeds right. true but as soon as he does anything unalethi like you know staring at Leophori and you oh know, it's that foreign blood it's like <laughs> that, yeah it's that oh it's that oh, no what dang it what's his mother she's rearing uh Iriali, yeah yeah she's rearing. Yeah, she's yeah, she's she's from Riri. Rira. I just remember her name, which I'm not supposed to say until the next book. Her name well, is her, her, her name is, Yeah. Yeah, I know. Clearly. So, her name yeah. is the sound of a basketball going through a net <laughs> or leaving the door slightly ajar. Uh, but yeah, it's just to a point it's almost too perfect the way it matches. Mm. Like just but how, it's so, how it's it's still, f- 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 it, um, but but it does feel it, it does feel it genuine, it, uh, fulfilling. Yeah. It doesn't feel satisfying. Contrived. Satisfying. Yes, it is satisfying. It, may, it it's one of these things where it makes a lot of sense once mm-hmm. you see because you know the the two people's personalities because you've had a full book to know them. Mm-hmm. You know that she's been under the controlling thumb of her father for years, and so the novelty of being able to be like. I accept this proposal is mm-hmm. very appealing to her. And mm-hmm. then, and oh, hey, also a prince. Oh, hey, my family needs allies. And then she sees him. And it's like, oh, hey, he is a hunk of beefcake. So, yeah, I'm doing well that way. Yeah. So she's, it's like, wow, okay, this is, and then she meets him and it's like, wow, he's actually a very genuine person, charming in his own weird way. He's, he's pleasant. He's, yeah. <laughs> I just, I love the fact that yeah, in so many conversations, she's just like kind of drooling over him. And then he <laughs> says something. She's like, stop it. I am a fully in control of my faculties. I am. A- <laughs> it's like, stop it. Not gonna You're ruining. I was, I was perfectly a- enjoying my object, my objectifying of you. You had to ruin it. <laughs> uh, and it only gets more fun in the next book, but we'll talk about mm-hmm. that next is time. Is this the, and this is the one with, oh, we already talked about the, where she interrupts his story. And yeah. asks about the other things. Yes, so, yes, yeah. yes. Sorry. She wants to know about number two in shard play. Mm. He's, <laughs> but that's, but it's also what endears her, her to him because he loves novelty. He's always well, to, been obsessed with novelty. Well, to the point where she asks the question and he answers a completely different one because he thinks that that's so the one she's going to ask. You know, that's and he's what like, to do. "Wait, what? <laughs> what?" <laughs> and so it's 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 more it's it's less the fact that they're perfect matches and how convenient mm-hmm. it is is more that the situation was a perfect match and then they actually got to know each other and found out, right. Wow. There's actually a lot to like here. I mean, mm-hmm. like it, it's sort of the concept of he is, you know, your very standard Prince charming. And in all of the fairy tales, Prince charming has his pick of any woman he wants. Mm-hmm. And of course they're all the exact same. And he, he and did have suddenly, his pick, but he also ruined every single. He kept one burning of them. those bridges behind him. It's mm-hmm. like for a Prince Charby, there's a lot of repellent that seems to be going on. Yeah, although part of that is because he's a lot more genuine, and he will not play. Like he does play the game to a point, but it always hits a speed bump after a while because he's just like I'm not. He he doesn't want to fully commit to this game because he mm-hmm. sees it for what it is. Well, it's it's all it's I don't I won't give him quite that credit. It's a lot of it is his he lets other women stay close to him and he offends the one that he's dating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, he doesn't I, stay totally focused. I'll give him the the credit because like I said, he plays the game and he's in and then basically but he's still got that 
basically Dalin our upbringing. You know, he, he's still his father's son to a degree. And so even as far as he goes, it always pulls him back. Like, and it's just one of those things, as different as you may be from your father or your mother, you know, as, as, as different as you may be from your parents, they're still a part of you. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, he wants to play the game. And he does it for a while, but he's just never able to fully do this it. Is, this is also the book where he sort of realizes how much he is his father's son because, mm-hmm. like, he finds himself being annoyed with, like, how sloppy other people are and slovenly. And he's just like, what the crap? I'm sounding like my dad. <laughs> well, and, and part of that is because, you know, at this point, like, in the first book, he was thinking his dad was going crazy. Mm-hmm. And now that he's accepted that his dad isn't going crazy, suddenly he's not questioning everything his father says. And, well, and, and he's notices. also seen what the games lead to because mm-hmm. he almost died because of them. Exactly. Yeah. So. Uh, and man, he's just telling Sadius, I think two or three times, how much he can't wait to kill him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sadius should learn to take people at their word. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, Amy, you've got in the notes, I'd forgotten about this scene, where Adel and, and Shalon basically... See the high storm? They go to the high storm. Like, they go to the... Yeah, it's a high storm party. It's a well, wine it's like, tasting like, thing, but it's like it's an a, outdoor patio. It's a diner. Or it's like, yeah, it's, a, it's this fancy restaurant that is set up for people to watch the high storm and then... And, and then, you know, like, get up to where it's going to... And then they, you know, retreat. And she pushes yeah. it to the last second. Because mm-hmm. she's... It must be pattern and whatever else all of Uh that like influencing the fact that she's starting to recognize things within the high storm and it's making her more in tune or questioning or whatever and poor adolin's going um um it's right there (laughs) and and it's also you know she it's a little bit of that whole shallan unleashed yeah because you know she's been under her father's thumb and then she Mm -hmm. was under yasna's you know guidance and now she's finally more herself you know, mm-hmm. especially after talking to Ten, she's Ten, and then imitating Yasna, she's reaching out a bit farther. You know, she's taking charge of the situation with uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, yes, Va- no. Vathna. No, 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 the high priest. Sabario. S- S- Sabario. Oh, Sabario. No, Sabario. Yeah, yes. she took. You know, she took control of that situation, and so she's actually a, had a lot more freedom than she's ever had. Oh, and yeah. And so now she's being a little bit more foolhardy. You know, she's she's staring the storm in the face until the last mm-hmm. second. And Adel is just like, are you crazy? Come on, let's go. <laughs> We're going to close the doors. Uh-huh. <laughs> we need to get in. And they get in like right before. And so mm-hmm. in moments like that, she almost fits the whole uh, Manic Pixie dream girl for Adolin. You know, because suddenly this is the girl who is willing to stare death in the face but just because she's fascinated at the power of nature and everything that's going on around her. Mm-hmm. And it's just this new, fresh new perspective that he's never really looked at. And it's just, yeah. and so. And she also doesn't play into like the social politics and all of that, that all, of, most of the other women that he's been dating do. Whereas she's like, well, I live, I grew up in the country. Yeah, she's right. And I have yeah, very different interests than they that. They consider her a bumpkin. Mm-hmm. Yep. With that she, hair. Ugh. <laughs> that red hair. Mm. But she's a bumpkin who's studied. Mm-hmm. And so it's just, it's, it's, inter- it's sort of like, have you ever talked to somebody who has like a strong redneck accent, but they're talking about brilliant stuff? This is something I, I've seen a lot grown. I, I grew up in Alabama and there were some people who you hear them and they sound just like this uneducated, uneducated redneck from out in the boondocks, but they're like a neurosurgeon. And I and haven't it, like it's I didn't just hear. This absolute, you know, it's Jeff, just this really Jeff weird. He has an entire bit based around this and how uncomfortable it makes him. <laughs> it, it it really is just because there's this disconnect, mm-hmm. and you know that she doesn't very- have the accent, but she is this rural girl. But she has studied, you know, in Carbrant and under Yasna Kalin and on her own, mm-hmm. and she's very intelligent, and so it just it throws people off. Yeah. It reminds me a little bit about how a lot of a lot of times Americans will hear like a British accent and go, oh, they sound so smart versus they aren't always that way. Mm-hmm. Whereas the southern accent often is thought of as a bumpkin type thing. Right. No, I didn't it, hear I didn't hear many southern accents up in, you know, the Pacific Northwest. So fair enough. But, but mm-hmm. yeah, no, but it's it's it is why the pairing works. 
And yeah, it mm-hmm. is a bit idealized and it is a trope Brandon has utilized a couple of times in other books and we've discussed that before. Mm-hmm. But I think this time more so than the other times he's justified it a lot more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The other they, times felt are... more like happenstance. And there there are some bumps in their relationship too. Mm-hmm. Like when she ends up in the chasm with Khaled and that introduces some other interesting, you know, like I didn't really see the the triangle last time when we were talking about it because I hadn't uh-huh. fully finished the book. But um, reading it, I'm it, like, yeah, there was more triangle stuff mm-hmm. in it than I remember. I'll say and it's a highly uh, isosceles triangle, but uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, anyway. But there's even more bumps in Oathbringer right. too. And, so and, it's not like and, perfect and, the whole way through. Although in Oathbringer, it also is to highlight other aspects of yes. what's going on with Shallan. So. Mm-hmm. She um, just takes cosplay too far. <laughs> way too far. She's a method actor oh, through and through. It's a bit more than cosplay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, I guess you can say that. Were we yeah. going to talk okay. about Navani? Yeah, we, we need to sort of <laughs> start up. wrapping stuff up because, yeah, we're oh. already... Yeah, so uh, so Navani, th- she doesn't get a whole lot in this yeah, book. Yeah, she doesn't. But there are two major. I mean, the two major relationships for her in this book, of course, are Navani and Shalon and Navani and Dalinar, because Navani mm-hmm. and Dalinar are, have this new relationship that it's a new relationship that had roots decades ago. Yeah. Um, and of course, everybody's sort of. Oh, you know, the whole war camp basically sees this as incest because she's his sister. Yeah. Which is interesting because in a lot of older, in some older cultures, this would have been the expected thing is he mm-hmm. dies. And so his brother marries it, the wife. If there's, if there's anything that, that Brandon does is he plays with historical tropes mm-hmm. and with how arbitrary taboos are in right. every culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Particularly when it comes to Stormlight, like that just like he, he goes so much deeper into that kind of thing in the Stormlight books. Yeah, he's got a lot of cultures and a lot of space and people to do. I it just with, love so that Alethkar's hat. Ah, oh, the warlike prudes of Alethkar. Mm. Oh, they're such an interesting, interesting people. Um, but yeah, so Navani, uh, when it comes to Navani and Shallan. Shalon comes and delivers the worst possible news that a mother can hear. Mm-hmm. And Navani's immediate reaction is to go into denial. She's like, you know, th- yeah. th- there's, you know, you didn't see. And to the point where she, when she finds out that Shalon soul cast the ship and sank the ship. She gets she, mad. She thinks she accuses Shalon of murdering her daughter. You know, because basically it's like she could have escaped. You could have saved her. And instead you killed her. Yeah. Um, and Delano was like, honey, yeah. she was stabbed through the heart. <laughs> heart. Pretty sure. <laughs> and Pretty it's a, sure it's a frustrating enough. thing because Navani herself is a scholar. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what Shalon needs. And that's who, like, for Navani and Shalon, they need to talk. They need to mm-hmm. discuss these things. There's so much information and so much they could do if they work together. But Navani is unable to at first. Well, yeah. so, and fight. even even after she moves past her initial anger, mm-hmm. she still can't bring herself to talk to her, and, and because she of what she represents, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, and until finally, after Shalon returns from the chasm, suddenly, you know, Navani goes up and this poor poor ragged the, girl who's gotten who's dealt with all these problems, and it, yeah. it's it's base. It, it actually reminds me very much of uh, in. Um, Oh, what's it called? The Force Awakens. When Rey comes back and mm. Leia sees her, you know, after after everything's happened with Han, and they give, they, it's a silent, they go up and they hug. It, mm-hmm. it, for some reason, that just, I, that connection it s- sticks in my head where um, suddenly they're able to mourn together. Yeah. Because they have very different relationships with this person who's no longer there. And but they some, both feel the loss. And they're able to comfort each other at mm-hmm. this point. Finally. Um, okay. So we got to talk. We talked about the attack of the assassin in white in the Kaladin episode. Yes. Um, so we'll, we'll sort of skip over that this time. 
Okay. Um, well, the only the only thing did we talk about Elakar's reaction to it though? Um, no, we we didn't. Because that's the only thing that I really stands out to me is I mean, there's there's Adolin freaking out and going, "Oh my goodness, this is so much worse than I thought it was. Mm-hmm. I can't do much." And he also gets starts getting suspicious of Kaladin, but there's also Elakar going, "Wait." I'm not important enough to be assassinated anymore. Uh-huh. <laughs> and like, that's an ego yeah. hurt. You know, he, it messes him up that way. There's one other thing with the Seth, like the second fight, uh, when Seth comes and he's fully unhinged mm-hmm. that I thought was interesting where Dalinar fights him and ev- everyone's okay, fighting him uh-huh. in, in the second time. The fact that, cause it's Dalinar the first time it's Dalinar, Adolin and Kaladin fighting together. Mm-hmm. And, like it's like oh he must have gotten injured and ran off but the second fight Dalinar is losing and he finally says like where he had the thought he's just like I like even had I not been drunk that day uh-huh. I never I could have... have faced this thing yeah right. and how like even though he knows he's about to die it releases a load from uh-huh. his shoulders that right. he's All that been guilt, carrying yeah. Just like it right. wouldn't have mattered. This thing is just beyond me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just which, thought that which was Which allowed him to forgive himself. Yeah. yeah. Ironically enough. Because it wasn't he died because I was drunk anymore. It was. It was he would have he died, died anyway. Yeah. I would have died too if I'd been mm-hmm. aware. Um, yeah. But uh, okay. So we, we got to talk about everything that goes on on the on the Shattered Plains, basically once <laughs> Dalinar finally gets a few people to march. Because, mm-hmm. you know, everything is building up and it's one of those, it's do or die time. You know, yeah. the the countdown is almost here. Um, just all, all of this stuff is building up. We have got to end this now. So we're going to make the, a full It's on the assault. weeping. So this is the only opportunity we have to do this. Without high storm, yeah. Right. It's the only and time so, we can mount a march. And so he goes out and he gets Royan to go off with him. And yeah. then suddenly, you know, they're at the staging ground and he looks out and his, and Sabariel shows up. <laughs> and he's just like, wait, what the heck? And Sabariel's to come. It's you. And Sabariel's out there like it's a party. You know, he's like carry. And uh, well, he's just and, like, I came before an Aladar. That has to count for something. Aladar. Well, no, well, no, but but I just love that you know Sabario. He's just sitting there like out, just like it's a picnic, and uh, his mistress is reading a novel. Mm-hmm. As you know, just like let's go, here we go. And then he's like, "Yeah, I came before Aladar, and Aladar, who has been entirely on Sadius's side, mm-hmm. has shown up." And you know, he's and Dalinar asks him, and he's like, "Sadius isn't my master." You know, the, I, I recognize that what you're trying to do is the right thing to do. And I'm tired um, of being bossed around by. Exactly. Um, but yeah, it's just it's a great little. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was fun. He got like the moment. mismatched groupings of people coming with him. But again, like as as the battle builds and, the you know, the storm grows and they're still sitting there under the canopy and she's reading the book just like, oh, da, 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 da. here we go. <laughs> it's like, just wonderful. Those, those two have to have like it is such a practice, you know, apathy. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Well, it's almost like to the point where it's just like I am freaking out, and I've got to you know I can, keep up the if, act. Yeah. If I don't do this, I'm going to be crying. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. But there, it just makes them so lovable because, mm-hmm. especially because you know she's reading a novel and she's sort of you know being unflappable which mm. is a thing of the high ladies but she's yeah. very much not a high lady no <laughs> she's no, such she a great she's, mix. she's a herdazian right yes yeah, she's her, a herdazian. herdazian mistress it's out mm-hmm. in the open yes yep and she won't marry him she refuses to do that i no. thought right yep he's proposed to her multiple times <laughs> she she's like do nope <laughs> not doing it and i just oh it's so great um and then of course the battle comes they've got the We've got the Parshman shooting lightning all over the place. and Oh, yeah. Oh. And, you know, and then, of course, poor Royan. You know, mm-hmm. uh, when the assassin in white shows up and the first thing he does is just touches Royan and Royan shoots up into the yeah. sky. Comes and then an comes down with a semester then, one of physics and then comes down with a thud. Yep. And it's just over. Um, and this is, It's a rough battle. I mean... Poor Adolin. 
He loses yeah. his Rashadium. He loses Sherblood. And like, they, I think they, lightning hits him, and Sherblood takes it yeah. off. Mm-hmm. What well, I know this is most like I love how they're like, "Ha ha! We can summon lightning." Shoot, and then it's like, "Huh." I it turns hit. out lightning is not a very precise weapon and sort of just goes wherever it wants. And meanwhile, everyone who knows how electricity works, you're just like, didn't think this one through, did you guys? <laughs> uh, there was an episode of, not Mythbusters, but the White Rabbit Project, which was like the three non-Mythbusters, like the three, the, the, the that three weren't the guys. two main ones. The build team. Yeah, the build yeah. team. Um, they had their own show, and there was an episode where they each were trying to figure out superpowers and one of them used Faraday cages and stuff to, oh, to create was, a lightning wand. It was one of the and guys, I thought. It was, was one it, of the guys. Was it Tori? I, Sounds I, like I, I don't remember. Tori. Anyway, 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 that's uh, neither here nor there. Sorry. But it's just, the, you know, it was still really, really hard to aim. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and he had to be, like, hooked yeah. up to it and stuff, so. Mm-hmm. I know, but so... In the end, I think one of the coolest things about it is in the end, Dalinar like gets his vindication that I was right. Mm-hmm. I w- I'm not crazy. Mm-hmm. You all now see that I'm not crazy, and everything's good to go here, mm-hmm. and everyone's going to fall in line, and everything's going to be going good from here on out. Oh. Uh. And then Sadius opens his mouth. So, one something I love about a. Adolin straight up murder Sadius. And that in and of itself is something <laughs> to, to put in the... Totally had it coming. <laughs> I, I, I see this as an absolute win. and But the thing I love about it is I always compare Sadius to the other irrepressible, unlovable a-hole of the Cosmere, which is Straff Venture. Mm. And in both cases, both of them die <laughs> and both of them see it coming. Yep. Yeah. One's from long distance because he's a tin eye, but the other, <laughs> it's covered straight for the eye. Yeah, and they, they had like a brutal brawl on the uh-huh. ground, the two of them. And it's just, well, it's because neither of them can go for their shard blade. It's that's And Aelin I think makes Adolin correct... has, is his wrist is broken too, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Or was yeah. it at least sore at the very least? Yeah, because I think Renarin had healed it. No, no, because yeah. he can't heal it yet. Okay. It must be after. Must yeah, be so after. this was. I think, so, it, so I think it's yeah, broken because I, I think, think it got broken. broken in the fight with yeah, the fight. Uh, with either Seth or Esh and I. Thought it was Esh and I, but I don't remember. Mm. But, but anyway. yeah, I definitely did. And it's just, I love it because Sadie's is all like, oh no, I'm going to spin it this way. And look at how cool. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> clever. And then Ada is just, just like, 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 done. No, nope. we're done. <laughs> and. and it's a completely different fight because suddenly this is a fight of sheer desperation mm-hmm. between the two of them. It's because they're already in close. They don't mm-hmm. have time for shard blades. And all it is, is just the slow march of I'm younger, I'm stronger. And eventually well, he wins. And this is essentially mm-hmm. Adolin's fifth duel. But in this one, there is no audience. There is oh, no yeah. performance. Well, and that's there why is it works. Only the execution. Literally. And only the passion of it too, because this mm-hmm. is when Adolin, because that the very it's it's and that's why it's so satisfying. Because Sadius had his viewpoint where he's like, he's the black bo- the Blackthorn reborn, mm-hmm. and he is so dangerous. I have to make because sh- he had he had been talking big like, oh, when you're a high prince, you'll thank me for what I've done to your father and all this stuff. And mm-hmm. he realizes, nope, gotta kill them all, every mm-hmm. single one of them, because he is dangerous mm-hmm. and. He forgot his own observation he made. Mm-hmm. That he had he's, the the black, he's the black thorn reborn. What's the black thorn? A man of passion. And you poked the bear. Mm-hmm. That you was more just, than poking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just like. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great, huh? You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Yeah. And then the bear mauls him. And <laughs> no one was sorry. Because uh, it's just it's just at the edge. You're just like, oh no, heavens, not Sadius. So, oh. yeah. well, poor and, and then, Adolin. Adolin feels guilty and weird about it. But well, mm-hmm. yeah, he. I mean, you, yeah. he took a life in cold blood. Like, right. mm-hmm. he's lived his whole life in, uh, of battles and duels, and mm-hmm. suddenly, 
he's played outside that structure and he yeah. has his father's lessons and he doesn't know what that means. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah. oh, I just remember when that happened and I don't know, it was like what, two years between Oathbringer and, uh, in this be. book? No, it was, it was almost immediate. I thought. Was it? It wasn't two years. By okay. Any means. Uh, it was all pretty I, quick, I thought. All I know is it felt like two years because like that was the moment, like a lot of other things happen at the end of this book, clearly. But for me, like that's the one I'm just oh. like. Oh, you oh, mean I... you mean like two years real life? I oh, was thinking you yeah. were saying in world. Okay, yes, yes, yes. It was like I was actually I think it was like three years. Okay, I just know when that happened. I'm just like, crap. I need to see how this one plays out, <laughs> and mm-hmm. knowing I have to wait, and just like, oh, that's the juicy one. <laughs> I need this. Yep. Um. And then meanwhile, what does Dalinar do when he's at Irithiru? He says, I'm going to explore. I'm going to go to the top. I'm mm-hmm. supposed to refound the Knights Radiant. Well, that means I need to bond a sprint. And it's going to be you. You. <laughs> <laughs> he's just he's like, like, I'm not turning into a weapon for you. <laughs> and he's like, that's fine. <laughs> I'm well, good. Just, I just thought at first, I am not some casual spread that you can bond. And then he does it. Well, there's other words. Okay, then. <laughs> he drops right, the I'll second idea on him. He's like, just, I know what the... Yeah, he's like, I know what the words are. Sorry. And this Starfox is going to grumble, mutter, snarl, angst. <laughs> Which continues into Oathbringer to some annoying parts and some delightful <laughs> parts. For, just he's such a grumpy, all-seeing... He's, he's, si- <laughs> he's simultaneously a grumpy old man and a petulant child at the same time. Mm-hmm. And it's all because of his, you know, he hasn't had the bond. And so he hasn't understood things with the right amount of nuance. And right. we're obviously getting ahead of ourselves. But yes. I just love at the end of that book, it's like, all right, we've got to refound the Knights Radiant. And Kaladin's like, uh, you know, I'll help you out. I'll help you mm-hmm. out. And then Renarin's like, and my axe comes in. And it's just this wonderful, uh, like, and, oh, everyone's a Radiant now. Well, oh, the, the thing is, Brandon had... You know, left clues. You know, the, oh yeah, and that's the, whole, the thing. The whole catatonic, the fact that he stopped wearing his glasses, and of course, everybody thinks, oh, he's just trying to fit in with Bridge Four. And no, and that's that's Brandon to a T, where you're like, oh, pff, that seems so contrived. You reread it, you're like, son of a gun. It's Before there. Shattered it again. Stupid, Surprising, but Brandon, inevitable. The stupid, perfect writing. <laughs> but yeah, and then they ask, what do you, what do you do? I see things. <laughs> I see dead people. Yeah, it's a, like that's what it should really be. That's that's the one thing we get is Shalon, like she's protective of Renard, mm-hmm. but at the same time she's always like, he's so creepy. He's <laughs> weird. <laughs> yep. And then at the very end, suddenly the sixth Colin shows up again. <laughs> She just you suddenly can't keep a good yes to down. She <laughs> just suddenly sort of steps out of nothing, and and who's who's sitting there waiting for her is Hoyd. It's, it's he's totally, just got the, yeah. he's just got this smug grin on his face. She's like, oh, there you are, <laughs> and she's like, got like a bandolier on or something, doesn't, doesn't she? Like, I don't. She, I just remember she's like the parchment. Yep. Uh, the the everstorm happened. Yep. Already done. Uh, <laughs> We've got to find Earth radio. you. The Knights of yeah. Radiant refounded. Dang it. It's like, it's like, well, I'm apparently a little bit behind. Hi. So. Oh, yeah. It does, but, like, yeah. that scene felt like with like with the Marvel movies and stuff, like how there's always, like, the, the end scenes and a lot. Some of them have been more mm-hmm. poignant than others. And that totally felt like one of those. And, and I will say, I know some people, they're annoyed. It's like, oh, another character, you know, basically resurrected. Her, I never thought... I never thought I she either. was it, dead. It felt weird. Like, I thought she was dead. The body but disappeared. I was, Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I remember see seeing a... the body disappear. I was too focused on, oh, my goodness, things are happening, and uh, I have to read fast. Well, it's because so didn't... she, doesn't, she doesn't see it disappear. What, what it is is because Shalon hides. Mm-hmm. And in her room, sent, yeah. And she, she comes sends, back, and the body's she gone. She sends, yeah, the body's gone. Oh, She's that's like, right. Yeah. Oh, they must have done something to the body. And meanwhile, here's me watching all superhero films. I'm like, did you see a body? No. Mm-hmm. No, she ain't dead. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Read TV tropes. And then suddenly well, the actually, goes- just read Brandon. All I can think of is Warbreaker, where it's like, they're just like, just like, do you think he's alive? He fell off a cliff to a certain doom. Of course he's alive. 
And then the screen goes black and the text comes up and it says, Yasna Kolin will return, <laughs> return in, in, <laughs> in Avengers Oathbringer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, anyway, all right. We, should, we, we really do need to start wrapping up. Guys, this is a good book. And we still have another discussion have on this. We have all the little epigraphs and stuff in the interviews. Yes, we've got the f- filling in the cracks episode. Which, read those. But not I like read. a spren. We don't get superpowers from this. Um, you don't. Neither do you. You don't know. I really do. You don't know. <laughs> anyway, but guess guess what time what guess what time that means it is now. Nine fifty two. That's right. It's t shirt time. T shirt. It's, it's it's giveaway time. So guys, this was a really, really fun one because to enter we had people telling us what kind of radiant their pets would be, and what y'all. Was, what were the paid best off. responses? We got we got to give a few of them some love. Right? We had a few who just said we you had know, a lot of edge edge dancers. There were a lot of edge dancers and wind runners, which makes sense because you've got mm-hmm. animals that are all over the place. Yeah. My favorite is when people were just like, "Uh, Dustbringer." Yeah, <laughs> that's my cat right there, Dustbringer right there. You know. It's gonna destroy it, all the everything. Dustbringers were cats, right? I think so. I think so. <laughs> there may have those... been a dog, but I'm not sure. A bunch of dogs were edge dancers because they'd eat anything. <laughs> and they yeah. run and skid across the floor. <laughs> it's so cute when they do that, too. And, um, and in their defense, those are the ones we know the most about. So and it's and not like were, any pet's going to be a bondsmith. I haven't seen if, any pet. And then, of course, there was a cat that was a will shaper because it's not going to do what anybody tells it. <laughs> so. And I thought there was one that was an else caller because they, like, disappear and, yes. like, reappear out of yes. nowhere. Yes, that was, yeah, that we was had so many one. good ones. Oh, that was fun. Okay. Anyway, so that means it is time to do the drawing. There were okay. 36 entries, Jordan, so if you okay. could give us a... Uh, All right, so I will put the number 36 into random.org, the website future rich people and cool people use every day for all random number needs. <laughs> we're not actually sponsored by them, but it's fun to pretend, isn't it, people? Hey. All right, and the number is 34. Who is that? The... This uh, so the winner is Airplane Maniac from Instagram. Hey! So uh, thank oh, you for entering, nice. and we will reach out to you over Instagram and get your uh, information so we can get that shipped out to you as soon as possible. So yeah. So um, let's see. Let me get that highlighted, and there it is. I wrote All part right. of the name in there, but oh ahead. you. You, you don't need to put it put it in there i've got okay. i've got a document i i do all this ah stuff. okay good. um now we do want to thank our patrons who are the ones who make it possible for us to keep creating new episodes it's thanks to y'all that we're able to do um these giveaways um and it, thanks to y'all and thanks to brandon's online store they have been awesome they sent mm-hmm. us a bunch of stuff to give out and it's just i, I i'm like, i'm really excited because you know what jordan do you think this is the coolest thing in in the in the bag? Well, Bill, I'm glad you asked because I was actually going to point out that uh, indeed it is not the coolest thing in the bag. This is not the coolest thing in the bag. Um, but it's yeah, true. so I'm really tempted but, to do that, Mem. I have no idea what. That. <laughs> there's like a big guy who's doing that, and he's like got his mouth wide open. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> totally we, exciting for the audio people. Yes, <laughs> all supernatural gifts. It wasn't do, a supernatural one. Oh, okay. Anyway. No, I'm thinking of the one where the two brothers are like, <laughs> at each other. Sorry. Oh, I do know that one, too. Sorry, Bill. Go ahead. <laughs> I know more about Supernatural you. from gifts than I do from any other source. I'm I'm most of the way through, well, I'm a good chunk of the way through Supernatural, but. Sorry. Anyway, the show will continue to be free for everybody. But if you want to support us, even with just a buck or two per episode, go to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies and sign up to be a patron. Uh, when you do so, you will get immediate access to our Discord channel. We've got some fun discussions going on in there. We've got some great people. And it's just an awesome community. So come and join us. Uh, on Discord, you can continue the discussion about the Cosmere, about the show. You also will get bonus content like the 6-7, which is a collection of seven pieces of content that the hosts of the, Cos- the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies find uh, every two weeks. And we want to share it with you. We, stuff we see and we just think, ooh, that's fun. Let's mm-hmm. share that. You'll also get access to any bonus content that we produce early. 
And beyond that, our patrons are automatically entered into our giveaways like this one today. Just to clarify though, the giveaways are not exclusive to patrons and they're free for anybody to enter. The patrons will just get their first entry automatically. And of course, you will help us to continue to make the show, improve the quality of the episodes. We're hoping to keep, you know, to grow the show to the point where we can actually justify two ep- or one episode every week instead of every other week and just want to improve it in other ways as possible. Um, so to all of our current and past patrons, once again, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Jordan. And remember, we're always watching. <laughs> Jordan okay. says thank you. He, yes. He does. <laughs> Jordan means thank you anyway. <laughs> yes. Uh, we are still saving up lore questions and aluminum foil hat theories from our listeners. And we want to hear from a lot of you. For We've got an episode coming up that we want is to. It, is it the one after the next one? No. Or is that after Edge we, we, Dancer? It's, no, it's after White Sand. White Sand. That's right. Okay. So we, we, you know, we've still got a few, you know, a little while to go until then. But we really, really want your questions and we want your your theories so that we can just have a great episode on that. Um, uh, just, you know, any ideas that you have, any questions that you're unclear on about the lore that you want us to clarify a little bit for you, just send them in. You can reach us at Cosmere studies at gmail.com. Now, of course, we've all got our own personal projects outside of the podcast. Jordan, where can we find your stuff? Uh, we can find me at twitch.tv slash splice stream, uh, doing more amiibo stuff. And more importantly, we are about to hit our 400th stream. So I'm going to have a special tournament for that. So if you'd Not like bad. to, yeah, I know, right. It's, uh, numbers add up. It's interesting when they do that. But, um, if you'd like to be there for the 400th stream, just give me a follow on Twitch and you'll be notified whenever I go live. That's going to happen in a few weeks. Some number that I wrote down somewhere, and it's not immediately in front of me, so we're not going to guess because that's going to be fun. Plus, we don't know when you're listening to this anyway, so it could all be a moot point. And you could be listening to this in the year 2021, and let me tell you, we've passed 400. (laughs) I hope. Oh my goodness, I hope too. In case I'm dead, uh, Bill's responsible for uh, doing the 400 stream. And in case I'm dead, Jordan's probably responsible for that death. It's true. <laughs> All right, Amy, where can we find you outside of this podcast? <clears throat> I'm on Facebook at Coincidence Cosplay and Props, on Twitter at Coincidence Cosp, because my name is too long, and on Instagram at Coincidence underscore Cosplay. I got through it. That's stumbling. That's awesome. Nice. So um, you should currently- see what she's done. For those of you who are audio only, she's uh, dyed her hair brown again, and <laughs> it's really the transformation's been incredible. It's ins- it's amazing. It's like it, it never so got natural. colored at all. Yeah. Um, anyway, so uh, we got a new 3D printer. So nice. I'm doing more 3D printing. Yeah. What is that so you got there. This can is ha- the back. Of, no, this is the back the of the evil. One? No. no. This is the back of my evil qu- or the evil queen's crown from Snow White. The front. Oh, you're is doing the evil queen. There. No, this is for a friend. Oh, okay. I was I'm gonna not say, why are queen. you only picking Disney villains? I'm Particularly not. passive aggressive ones. <laughs> I promise I'm not. Um, anyway, but I'm making the crown for her, so there'll be pictures of that up. And I'm doing Queen Eleanor's crown. I'm reprinting it instead of having it in like six pieces. It's going to be three, which should be so much nicer. Um, and I'm going to restyle my Lady Tremaine hair because right now it's still scary because I'm going to go mm. to a an event for kind of Make-A-Wish type children. And so it's going to be a royal ball type thing and I'm going to be Lady Tremaine for that. Nice. So those are my, my current projects. I'm sorry, projects. the Make-A-Wish children and they're sending a Disney villain to it? I There's princesses too. I'm oh, just going to okay. wander. She, she I was just wondering a, what this wish was and who the kid was and like I'm sorry for no them, it's but at the it's same a bunch of different questions. kids it's it's not exactly make a wish but it's children who are having difficulties and other I don't know the exact circumstances but remember Jordan Jafar was a genie too that's true yeah 
He so, wasn't a very nice genie, but he was still a genie. Exactly. That's the kind of wishes that I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, when I'm not here, I've got a bunch of board game reviews over at the Innkeeper's Table at www.innkeeperstable.com. I post about games on social media, board games and card games, dice games, etc. So go check those out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at, at Innkeeper's Table. For those of you who can't become patrons just yet, of course, please consider heading over to iTunes and giving us a five-star review. It really helps. Um, any final thoughts on the Colins before we head out? Uh, I like them. They're cool <laughs> beans. My final thought is that I really hope you, Bill, don't die under mysterious circumstances because this podcast is going to be evidence 1A. <laughs> very incriminating, indeed. And I don't like this. So if you could die <laughs> if, under very natural circumstances, I would, would appreciate it. Would everybody please note, Jordan just said, ask me if I could die. So... <laughs> Um, this for me, is going poorly for me. <laughs> for me, Dalinar is just so freaking hardcore, and I love oh, it. Oh yeah! Again, the last clap. I mean, just <laughs> he mm-hmm. catches the sword. It's completely unpractical. I'm pretty sure the, the last clap was the name of like uh, some like, audio band from the 70s. It's real experimental. The oh. last clap album. I was thinking it was my uh, my Europe cover band. Oh, that's final pretty cap. good. Mm. The last clap. Anyway, in addition to the live episodes of the show that stream on twitch.tv slash innkeepers table every two weeks on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, our listeners can find our videos on YouTube or the audio versions of the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and anywhere else that you can find podcasts by searching for Cosmere Studies. You can also follow us and contact us through Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the profile at Cosmere Studies. For our next episode, we're finally going to be wrapping up this trip to Roshar as we close out our discussion of Words of Radiance, looking at all the goodies and extras like the epigrams and interludes. We'd love to see you there, so join us for the live stream on May 13th, 2019. In the meantime, though, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, thanks for listening, and remember, there's There's always always another another secret. secret.